Yes, we are live on YouTube. Hello, my name is Carmen Tovar. And today we are uh, our second week of the school year internship program showcases. And today we are showcasing uh, the school year internship for CRISPR. And uh, this program was made possible in collaboration with Downey Unified and Celico, the Southeast Los Angeles County Workforce Development Board. And this was an internship, a 12 week virtual internship. And I'm going to pass it to Michael. So Michael Friend and Kay Taylor from the Minority Coalition for Precision um, Medicine, who led this deep dive internship for the past 12 weeks. So welcome, Michael. Hey there. Hi, everyone out there. <laughs> Thank you so much, Carmen. I'm Michael Friend, uh, founder of Minority Coalition for Precision Medicine. And I'm very excited to, um, to share and to also uh, hear from our wonderful interns as to what this, uh, the last few weeks have been like for them. And I want to kind of move in this direction. So I'll talk a little bit about the Minority Coalition for Precision Medicine and what, what our goals are. And then uh, you'll hear from Kay Taylor, uh, who served as project manager for uh, particularly this season and this deep dive. And then we'll hear from our interns as well. Uh, so thank you again for joining us. I'm Michael Friend, the founder of Minority Coalition for Precision Medicine. And our goal as an organization is to really focus around uh, conversations around genomics and technology such as CRISPR uh, that really have uh, drastic uh, impacts on the communities. Uh, particularly the minority communities as a whole, and, and really engaging the minority community around these conversations uh, to uh, s assist with information and direction, particularly as it relates to these technologies as they come forward. And so one of the most important areas that we found uh, in our conversations uh, on, on some of the uh, key stakeholders is particularly the conversations uh, that uh, we should be having more so with the youth or the next gen, as we call them, the next generation that will ultimately be impacted by these technologies. And so that's what we're doing uh, with our deep dive to really allow the interns to take these discussions a little further and really give their input as to how they see this technology really uh, being utilized in uh, four areas. The, the areas that we focus on are the political implications of the technology, as well as the social, the ethical, and the commercial implications of these technologies. And so that's a little bit what you'll hear uh, as we move forward. So thank you all again. I'm looking forward to hearing from our interns uh, soon. So Kate Taylor, if, if you there and you want to share, thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Michael. And uh, thank you, uh, Carmen, uh, for the introduction. I just wanted to say uh, this season, um, being with Minority Coalition for Prisons of Medicine um, has been an amazing, amazing feat for me. I have a background in health education, health policy, and also health equity. And then teaming up with Michael now on this um, has been more so forward looking for biotechnology and the new technologies that will be emerging. And so um, each and every one of the um, interns were extremely, extremely great to work with. They were so insightful and so energetic and it really really was a great time learning about CRISPR and just seeing how we could further the conversations um, from from different stakeholders perspectives specifically the younger um, people and so it, it was just been a joy and so um, I will with that ado I'll thank everyone who participated with us and and even Bea for even allowing this to happen and um, and then I'll pass on the torch to Catherine to begin her um, her presentation. Okay, hi everybody. Um, my name is Catherine Saman and I was one of the interns with CRISPR technology for the winter internship. Uh, just a quick question. So I'm supposed to share my screen, right? Okay, so let me go ahead and share my screen. And all right, so I made a few slides just kind of going over the basics um, of what I did during this internship and I also wanted to thank everybody for making this opportunity possible because I honestly learned a lot and got to meet some amazing people to work with. So thank you. 
All right, so here's my introduction slide. Okay, so starting from scratch. Um, the first thing we did was watch a human nature documentary on Netflix, and it kind of went into depth about what CRISPR is, and we got to see some interviews from real life people that have experienced um, issues with genetic disorders and how CRISPR has affected their lives positively. So after we watched that, one of my first responsibilities was creating a Google Doc that um, kind of reached out, not reached out, I looked up a couple companies that worked with CRISPR technology and making this doc helped me understand the diversity of CRISPR as some companies use the technology for agriculture and others use them for sickle cell anemia, et cetera. Um, one of my favorite CRISPR companies that I remember, I can't remember the name exactly, but one of them focuses on genetically engineering plant seeds to combat global warming and all the changes that are going on in our environment. And I thought that was really cool as the topic of food shortages and whatnot is sort of surfacing recently. Okay, this is part two of the Google Doc. I thought I'd include most of the companies. Uh, I think I gathered around 10 or 11 with the help of Celine and April as well. Okay, so after that, um, my second responsibility was connecting California schools. So I organized a Google spreadsheet of approximately 108 high schools in California. This was only in LA County. I was blown away by that, to say the least. And we were able to refer to this spreadsheet a lot for um, our constant contact page that we were creating over the past couple of weeks. And as you can see, this spreadsheet is very detailed. It has the district, the high school, the principal, the phone number, and the emails. So it took a bit of time to get, but we finally did it. And I definitely consider that an accomplishment. Here's the second page, because I thought might as well showcase all the work we did. All right, so again, it took a few weeks to get the exact details of each school's principal, phone number, email address, et cetera, but I made it work and I couldn't have done it without my peers. All right, so the first video. Celine and I made a scripted video together that intends to be attached to our constant contact page as an introduction to any company member or school principal that opens our email. Thus, we were able to briefly introduce our organization, our intention, and a bit of what CRISPR Day will entail. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Dear CRISPR Working Company, my name is Catherine. And I'm Celine. And we are interns with CEO of Minority Coalition for Precision Medicine, Michael Friend, and industry leader, Kay Taylor. Over the past year, we had the opportunity to deep dive into the world of CRISPR. These six letters were not common to us before, but after the amazing year we spent learning about CRISPR with Michael, this word never left our minds. Now, Celine and I are continuing our understanding of the amazing complexities of CRISPR, something that nature had invented first. And now through medical technology, CRISPR mimics gene editing behavior and can save the lives of those who suffer from genetic disorders, enhance agricultural growth and more. As we have had the incredible opportunity to learn about the power of CRISPR, students across America and California specifically barely skim across CRISPR in our curriculum. That is why this event is so crucial to be sponsored and attended by esteemed companies such as yours. To spread knowledge about CRISPR and enlighten students across California on the innovative tool CRISPR is. Learning from companies like you will help show the next generation the power of these six letters. Our CRISPR Uncut The Future Is Now event will be held during the beginning of April via Zoom. So please look out for further details about the event that will be shared with you. For now, please make sure to check the details with the attached flyer for CRISPR Uncut. We really hope you will attend CRISPR Uncut and cannot wait to see you there. Thank you.
right, so that was our first video. Uh, I hope you guys liked that. I worked on iMovie to edit it. Were, were you guys able to hear everything okay, the audio? All right, perfect. So yeah, I was able to edit that video through iMovie. Selena and I met up on Zoom one night and she screen recorded the video, sent it to me, and then I edited it. I edited it for us. All right, so I took on the responsibility of editing our videos to the schools and companies on iMovie and received plenty of helpful feedback from Michael, Kay, and Emma. So I did make two separate videos. Um, they are the exact same script. We only changed the, the word company to school. So that's why I only chose to show one of them. Okay, so the second video. After we all decided on who was gonna focus on what, my responsibility for CRISPR Day revolved around the ethical impact of CRISPR. I was able to use some of my past knowledge from the Harvard Genetics Internship I completed over the summer. Hi everyone, my name is Catherine and I'm a part of the Next Gen CRISPR project. Today, I will be talking about CRISPR and its ethical implications. CRISPR stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats. This technology is a relatively simple procedure that could be used to edit hereditary diseases out of existence. It seems like it would be a no-brainer to use CRISPR to treat diseases such as sickle cell anemia. However, without regulations, CRISPR could easily be misused for enhancing purposes. This lack of rules could easily enable problematic policies, such as eugenics, where certain phenotypes could be edited out of existence in an attempt to create the perfect human race. This isn't a far reach, seeing as CRISPR is still undergoing clinical trials, yet the topic of designer babies have already begun being discussed. Several questions surround the ethical controversies of CRISPR, such as, should we allow parents to permanently edit their germlines? How does this violate the future of their child? Should we be allowed to essentially step into the role of a creator? Where do we draw the line? Within scientific communities, it has been made a point to treat the more life-threatening cases to avoid crossing any ethical boundaries. However, this line has yet to be defined which is why it's important for all of us to be involved in the discussion surrounding CRISPR moving forward. Your voices deserve to be heard. Please support by liking, sharing, and subscribing. Thank you. Okay, so sorry for the really awkward pauses in between like the paragraphs that I was saying. Um, I think one of our goals was to combine some of the videos or put some B-roll over the footage and we didn't get to do that. So that explains the awkward pauses. Okay, so our goals in this internship um, included creating an, a learning-based and comfortable environment for schools and companies to come together and discuss the importance of CRISPR technology. I was able to do that um, in my anatomy club at Downey High School. I'm the president of anatomy club and actually got to spend a whole month teaching the members of our club about CRISPR. So that's another reason why I'm really thankful for this internship, because I was able to spread some knowledge on something that's slowly but surely creeping into our society. Okay, that concludes my presentation. Thank you, Bea Group, for this opportunity. And yeah, it was awesome. Catherine, do you want to introduce your, your peer? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. So my peer uh, here with us today is Celine. Um, yeah, welcome, Celine. Hi, I'm really happy to be here. And I, I'm going to start sharing my presentation right now. Okay. 
Hi everyone, my name is Celine Hamelians and I'm going to be speaking about my school year internship with the CRISPR Deep Dive. So just a bit of an introduction. I attend Crescenta Valley High School. I'm 17 years old and the way that I first heard about CRISPR was through the, my Academy of Science and Medicine as I enrolled in a biotechnology class where CRISPR was spoken of and I had seen the name, but I hadn't learned much about it as it is an up and coming new technology. And I was a part of the summer CRISPR internship with Michael Friend where multiple students and uh, multiple students from my school and from Downey were able to curate a human nature study guide, which was based off of the human nature documentary, which we had curated over the summer. And we were able to share to schools across California and all the way to New York. And now I was very blessed and grateful to be a part of the school year internship um, with industry leader, as Michael had said, um, of the CEO of Minority Coalition for Precision Medicine and with Kay Taylor. So just a little bit of a background of, of CRISPR. CRISPR um, is a gene editing tool that uses Cas9 as its leading enzyme to cut and edit genes and diseases that would code for disorders such as sickle cell anemia or anything that would actually code such as TRI21, which would give you any type of genetic disorder. And it's a very powerful tool that is up and coming and our entire goal, as Catherine was saying, was to teach more people about what CRISPR is and just how amazing and how powerful it is. So an overview of the CRISPR projects I undertook, I was social media manager over the school year internship. I, as Catherine mentioned, I aided in finding the schools and companies across California to send our constant contact to. I worked in learning how to use constant contact as a platform and making our own invite. and then. As Catherine shared, we made the invite video and I, I also curated YouTube videos as well to teach us about the different topics pertaining CRISPR. So as social media manager, I managed all of our social media accounts under our next gen CRISPR name, which is our organization that we started that fights and encourages to share information about CRISPR to our youth and to the next generation as it really is in our hands to learn about this amazing tool. I worked with Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, posting any news that I currently saw about CRISPR, posting our own content, trying to get the word out about CRISPR, and just curating as many posts as I can about the documentary or about any type of upcoming news I saw. And this was our Instagram page. Um, next gen CRISPR, as you can see in the bio, it, we just listed our link tree as well that linked everyone to any type of platforms that we had, and we post and we posted in um, pertaining to the new CRISPR Career Day that we will be holding later in the year. So it was just great to get publicity out and get more familiar with social media platforms in the role of an employee working for a company or trying to promote an organization. And I was able to learn and get familiar with Constant Contact, which I um, was able to utilize to make an invite to send to CRISPR-related institutions and companies, as well as we are going to send them to schools as well for the career day as students are our main audience members. And this is just the beginning photo of the CRISPR Uncut um, Constant Contact that I made. However, I will show you guys a walkthrough of it because it really is an amazing app that I learned how to use and it shows up in your email as one long list and it's almost like a graphic. So I really want to share that. Or I have it open here so we can just see this. So this is how I had curated it and I use, thankfully to under Michael's and Kay's help and um, through the feedback of Emma and Catherine and April, I was able to make this with their feedback and learning along the way with them as well. So this is what we were going to send to institutions and companies where we talked about the event details and how our student-led discussions would work about the human nature documentary. And it was really amazing to get to work on it and figure out how to use constant contact. And as Catherine mentioned, here was our video about the invite that we were going that we're going to send to companies and institutions and just really honing in on the human nature documentary which is our main basis as next gen crispr i also included the trailer and just any 
uh, and information about the documentary so that as we are planning our watch party, which would be held on Netflix for students before the career day to be able to watch a documentary. And yeah, this is basically the entirety of the constant contact. It was really amazing to get to work with an application I had not really known before or had not used before, but I had of course heard of it. And we sent a bunch of trial emails and we were able to really um, hone in and use this as our final product. And yeah, we're very excited for the event that is going to be held in fall 2022 as the other CRISPR interns uh, take over, but I will continue. So as Catherine had mentioned and Michael mentioned, we created and curated videos about different topics and mine were uh, about the commercial aspect and the social aspect of CRISPR. And I will play those right now. Sorry, my Wi-Fi is a bit laggy. I don't know this one. Hi everyone, my name is Celine and I'm a part of the Next Gen CRISPR project. Today, I'll be speaking to you about CRISPR and its commercial implications. CRISPR stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats. CRISPR allows scientists to edit the genes in living organisms, a relatively simple procedure that could be used to edit diseases out of existence. This technology will play a huge role in cutting down costs of medical companies, specifically in the pharmaceutical industry. This technology creates high quality models of human diseases within a shorter time frame and reduces the number of failed products ultimately increasing productivity while cutting down costs of these pharmaceutical processes. While this technology will greatly benefit companies, its patients would quite literally have to pay. During clinical trials done for CRISPR, it was estimated to cost $2 million per patient. Insurance companies tend to cover treatment plans that have specific amount of strong data backing its effectiveness. Seeing as CRISPR is a relatively new treatment, it will likely not be backed for a while, which is why it is so important for all of us to be involved in the discussion moving forward. Your voices deserve to be heard. Please support by liking, sharing, and subscribing. Thank you. So that was our video about the, the video that I had made about our commercial aspect of CRISPR, just trying to get knowledge and information spread about all the aspects of CRISPR. We each created our own videos. And this was my second video about the social aspect of CRISPR. Hi, everyone. My name is Celine, and I'm a part of the Next Gen CRISPR project. Today, I'll be telling about CRISPR and its social implications. CRISPR stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced short palindromic repeats. CRISPR allows scientists to edit the genes in living organisms, a relatively simple procedure that could allow us to edit diseases out of existence. While this technology could result in longer, healthier lives, not everyone would be able to afford the high costs of CRISPR. The divide between the rich and the less fortunate would further separate, as the main carriers of these diseases are the lower class. A prime example of this would be the African-American community who suffers from a genetic disorder known as sickle cell anemia, a genetic blood disorder that affects the hemoglobin of the blood. 
causing a contorted sickle-shaped cell that is unable to carry oxygen. As a result of systematic oppression, this community, along with other marginalized communities, do not have equal access to healthcare, a basic human right. Which is why it is so important for all of us to be involved in this discussion surrounding CRISPR moving forward. Your voices deserve to be heard. Please support by liking, sharing, and subscribing. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the videos. And to finish off my presentation, just a few takeaways from this internship as I had completed the summer internship and was so excited and blessed to be part of the school year internship. It was amazing and educational as I continued to grow and evolve in my knowledge as someone who's continuing to learn about CRISPR. And it was just very educational to continue to learn about all the new aspects of CRISPR and be able to educate our next generation about CRISPR as it is so important and crucial. And as I had learned about CRISPR for the very first time in great depth last summer, it continued to ignite this passion that I have for CRISPR and the evolving world of science and technology. As I also shared this with my AP biology class, as we have just finished a topic and a chapter on CRISPR and the Cas9 editing system. So it was really amazing to be able to read it in our textbook and know that I have this amount of knowledge backing in and was able to participate in such a great internship with Michael, with Kay, and under the guidance of Emma as well. And I was very happy to be able to share about CRISPR and teach my peers in a school setting about it as we will on our career day as well. And overall, I also learned and gained a lot of amazing work experience and work skills as an employee and as an employee under this while still continuing to grow and learn about CRISPR as an emerging passion of mine. So thank you for listening. Congratulations, Celine and Catherine. We're so proud of you. And we got to learn a little more about what you were working on these past 12 weeks. So thank you. At this point, I'm going to kick off our questions and answers. And I will start with the first question. So what did you learn about yourself uh, working with, with Michael, Kay, and this project? If you could share a little bit about what did you learn about yourself during this, this time? Catherine, I'll go ahead and, and start with you. All right, so something that I learned about myself is that um, I'm a pretty good communicator. I wasn't scared of asking questions to Michael and Kay and Emma and um, embracing the impact of feedback, I guess you could say, because it honestly takes a village to make something like this work. And through all the things that I had to do with organization, um, it was really helpful to have all that feedback, and I definitely learned that communicating is really important, and it taught me a lot about communicating more with others, and also it just sort of, like Celine said, it accelerated my passion for CRISPR technology. Um, I wanted to do the CRISPR internship specifically this time instead of the Harvard genetics one because I wanted to expand my knowledge on biomedical technology as I aspire to be a biomedical engineer and will probably start becoming one once I enter college after this semester is over. Um, so that's pretty much what I learned about myself and I'm definitely really grateful for this opportunity. What about you, Celine? Thank you, Catherine. Um, as it pertains to skills that I gained, I learned that I can manage my time much better than I thought. And that's a new skill that this internship also showed me is that when we would have meetings during the week or we were learning, I had to film, we had to film the videos or work on a constant contact. I bettered my time management skills. And also about CRISPR and social media, I learned a lot more about how to create plans and different posts and using Google Docs or using Google Sheets to really set my plans into stone and then be able to execute them correctly. So it just gave, it gave me a lot of work experience and general uh, skills as well, besides the science and educational skills that I learned through the CRISPR deep dive. It really helped me 
understand bet my skills better and develop my skills better uh, regarding time management and as Catherine was saying communication as well because the meetings were really helpful working with Michael and Kay and I think those skills really enhanced and grew over the internship. Thank you, Celine. And I will open it to others in the room if there are any questions that you might have for Celine and Catherine. Yes, I have a question for both of them. So I wanted to ask, you know, you achieved quite a bit in this internship. If you had maybe a couple of weeks more, what else would you have wanted to do? All right, I guess I'll begin. Um, something that I definitely wish we could have gotten to was actually executing the emails um, with the constant contact information to the companies. Um, and also, I think it would have been a lot, a lot more fun if we could expand our social media a little bit more. I think definitely those extra couple of weeks would have helped us a lot because um, honestly, it, it only takes one or two days if something you know blows up on Instagram or TikTok. It's very possible to gain a good amount of following. And we already have a good amount of following right now, but I definitely think that's something that would have taken off if we had just a little bit more time. I mean, personally speaking, the reason that I reapplied for the CRISPR deep dive was because I was so excited from the summer internship, creating our own study guide. And I really was like yearning and wanting to continue to work on all the projects we had started. So I know during the last meeting, we were, I was kind of devastated because we had started so much still and there was still so much that, were le that was left to be done. As Catherine was saying, it would have it been amazing in these next few weeks to have executed the, intern executed the career day and sent the constant contact and seen it sent in its email form. But it was truly amazing to actually create it and work with the application. But if we had a couple more weeks, it would have been great to uh, finalize those videos that we had just shown you guys and be able to post them onto our accounts and uh, just further everything that we had started project wise and actually execute the career day. But I'm excited for the future and hopefully we will be able to in some way or another. Thank you, Celine. And note to self is that we might have to make this internship longer. So Monica, we will have to try to see what we could do with this timeline for next year. But thank you, Celine. And I'll pass it back to Michael and Kay. Any questions for Celine and Catherine? Well, um, thank, thank you all so much. Um, the presentations, um, it was nice to see um, the presentations. Uh, just a quick comment that really see, you know, all, all the work that was done, uh, particularly around the uh, schools. Uh, one, one of the questions, I think it was a question we, we had already asked, um, but I'll ask uh, uh, this question to both interns around the conversations around uh, designer babies uh, when it comes to CRISPR and the use of the technology. How, how do you feel um, about uh, CRISPR being utilized to design babies? I think the topic of design is very tangible um, in the sense that you can expand on like many definitions of what design means. Uh, personally, I support designing babies to be healthier, meaning that if they inherit a genetic condition that can shorten their lifespan, interfere with their day-to-day -day activities, um, et cetera, then I think that's when CRISPR is ethically important. But if you're trying to create like a supersonic, like speed baby with purple eyes, I don't really think that's necessary. So that's my personal opinion on um, the length that CRISPR should go in the sense of gene editing fetuses or babies. Um, after watching the human nature documentary and seeing and reading about 
the effects that genetic disorders have on people, such as sickle cell anemia, I think that it would be the most uh, of the utmost importance to use CRISPR first and foremost for removing and editing these genetic disorders, whether that be in design as designer babies. I think that would be probably the, in my eyes, that's the most ethically sustainable way of creating designer babies to, is to remove these genetic disorder, disorders and these diseases as um, they would better the baby's life expectancy. And as we can see, as we see in the documentary and um, with anything, everything that we've been reading and learning about, it's really detrimental. And a lot of these genetic disorders cause, um, cause life expectancy to decrease. And I think that it would be as Catherine was saying, first and foremost, used to remove any type of these genetic disorders that are so detrimental. And anything that would change your um, phenotype in a way that's only meant for um, looks and appearance, I definitely think should not be the first thing that we think of and that uh, scientists continue to work on as what's most important is to um, help the health and the actual the actual medical needs of the people who actually endure these genetic disorders, I think that would be the most powerful use of CRISPR. And especially with designer babies, I think that's what would be the most important to use CRISPR for. Thank you, Celine. And I'll pass it to Kay. Kay, do you have any questions for the group? Um, I just want to again just say thank you to to everyone, both Catherine and um, and Celine. I guess my question would be, would you guys be interested in coming back to um, help us with the career day, the CRISPR now, which you guys worked so hard on? So what, whether it be panelists or whether uh, to help to continue to develop uh, the content and, and the companies, you, would you guys still want to come back if you if you choose or not choose the internship for the summer or for the next season? Would you be willing to come back and assist? And, and maybe small fat. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I would love to. I mean, that's what was so devastating on the last day. I was like, we're already done. Like, I want to send the constant contact where I want to be able to um, see the interaction we have with schools and companies. And I had already told a few like teachers as well. And um, I think I was so excited to send it. So of course, I would love to continue it in any shape or form. And I know that's what we were talking about in the last meeting too with Emma about how we can actually continue it. So I would so definitely love to and would definitely want to. Great. Thank you, Celine. I Thank definitely, you. I definitely agree with Celine on that because I've already learned so much about CRISPR, but I know that there's so much more I can learn. So I think even just coming back to work with the future interns on CRISPR day, I would already learn something new about CRISPR technology and would also be able to share what I worked on with them as well. Because I think one of my favorite things about this internship is the idea of sharing knowledge and expanding knowledge. So I definitely come back to work with that. Thank you. I apologize, you guys. I did not realize that last um, Thursday, that was the last session until Michael called me and said, this is tonight's the last session. I was like, are you serious? The time went by so fast. And that's what they say when you're having fun. And we, we had an amazing time. So um, again, I look forward to, to seeing you guys and working with you guys in the future as well. Thank you. We are getting closer to the end of this showcase. Catherine, Celine, Michael, Kay, uh, do you have any final remarks? Well, mine would be, um, I'm, when, when you think about the importance of this conversation, um, particularly with key stakeholders, which we were at a meeting in D.C., and just hearing the need uh, there and for that group to acknowledge that we did leave out younger voices. And for us to have already uh, been working to include uh, the younger voices in this conversation. So I'm excited as well to see and hear from the companies and their involvement and their input and their feedback, you know, once these uh, videos and, and, and certain communications uh, are shared with them. And so I want to thank the interns so much. I know we had one 
intern Abel that we didn't hear from tonight. So we're we're going to be um, certainly coming back to to hear from Abel for sure. But thank you all so much. Thank you, Bea. Thank you, uh, Kay, for your uh, wonderful work in helping us to make this uh, uh, reality. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Catherine, Celine, any final remarks for future interns who are going to be applying for this internship as we get closer to the summer? This internship is really fun and also the icebreakers are like the best part. I really like the icebreakers at the beginning of every meeting because it really helped me get more comfortable with uh, Celine and April and Michael, Kay and Emma. Um, just kind of like talking about things that aren't related to work, like your favorite song or the favorite place that you've been to. I really, those are moments that I remembered a lot from this internship. And I definitely think that those should continue for future interns because it's a great strategy to warm up to each other. I definitely second that. And as Catherine was saying, we kind of created our own little CRISPR family. Like we learned about each other and me, Catherine and April, it was amazing to work with each other. And we had each other throughout all our projects and we got feedback from one another. So I would definitely say after doing this twice, definitely apply to the CRISPR internship. Michael's amazing. Having Kay as an addition was even, uh, it was just so amazing. And it was, it was great to learn with them and learn about CRISPR through the guidance of these two industry leaders. And I think that the conversations that we started with one another and any any type of, anytime we had an icebreaker that related to CRISPR too was just super educational. And I think it's an up and coming and a really important new facet of technology. So if you get the chance, apply to this one because this deep dive is literally about us and it's about the future generations and CRISPR is the future. So I think that I think it would be, it's the best internship out there. And I'll say that. <laughs> Thank you so much, Celine and Catherine. Again, congratulations for showcasing and completing your internship. And thank you, Michael. Thank you, Kay, for being the leads uh, of this deep dive, this internship for the past 12 weeks. And I also wanna thank again, um, uh, Downey Unified School District and Salico, the Southeast Los Angeles County Workforce Development Board. Um, together, we made this uh, internship experience possible for Catherine and Celine. And for any interns who are watching, uh, uh, we hope you could apply in May and uh, submit your application for the CRISPR internship. And thank you for friends and family and teachers and administrators who are watching us, us via YouTube. So thank you so much. And um, I do want to make a plug for the next showcase. Uh, we are going live again on Wednesday, March 30th from 4 to 6 p.m. Pacific time for the social science research. So please do join us um, on Wednesday to, to witness the next showcase of the school year internship program. So thank you so much. And I hope you have a rest, uh, a good rest of your